and I will unmute. And John Russell, where are you? And just to make sure everybody knows, we are recording tonight. I hope that's okay. If, if you don't like that, you can uh, stop your video and mute. You'll be all good if you're in the witness protection plan. So John and Cal, go ahead and unmute yourselves, please. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, now. Yeah. Okay. And I will get this show on the road. Oh, wait a minute. To share my screen. Everybody see that okay? Yes. Yep. Okay. And there's their first image from uh, Jim Jurovitz, and this goes to John Russell. Yeah, I uh, appreciate coming in filling in a little bit. I don't know what's wrong with my camera on my on my screen, so I apologize for the softness. That's probably a blessing for most of you not have to look at me, but when I first saw this picture, I was fascinated by the sharpness of it. It works very, very well in black and white. Um, I, I wondered if Rags had something to do with that, seeing as an Avery uh, tractor, but um, I love the fact the guy's doing something, too. A lot of the time you see people posing with their, with their tractors, and this is a nice picture. Um, I love the texture and I thought the crop was really nice. It's very tightly cropped. I like that a lot. Um, I, very well done. Uh, Jim, that's a nice picture. Thank you. Okay. Um, up next is Autumn Maple Leaves by uh, Steve Engel. I Steve, I really like the I really like the variegation of color. It uh, it clearly satisfies for me the criteria of patterns. Uh, the replica replication of the leaf shape is really enhanced with color as an accessory to the patterns. I like that a lot. I would like to compare this image with approximately fifteen percent of the image enlarged to the same area. I wonder if it would really punch to have uh, just a section of, of the leaf patterns enlarged. Less is more, so to say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then up next is Barn Pattern by Mary Picar. Back to John. I like this picture a lot. I I, uh, I was fascinated by the fact there's snow coming down. Um, the texture of the soffit under the roof line there really adds a lot to it. it it's nice third competition composition too. Excuse me. Um, I was fascinated by the picture because of its simplicity. You know, a lot of the pictures you uh, look at it and it doesn't do anything for you, but there's so much texture here. And uh, I thought it was quite fascinating. The red really jumps out on it. Um, I thought it was a very, very nicely, nicely done. It makes you want to look at a metal building a little differently. Uh, and what's fun to do with a zoom lens or any other lens you've got, if you can walk back and forth, is to check sections of a building like this. The building itself may have been boring, but not in this picture. This is, is very well done. OK. Um... Then we have a building reflected by Leo Paviglio. If I've got your name right, I apologize if I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, Leo, this very well satisfies the criterion of patterns. For me, the distorted lines add an energy, a dynamic. In this image, I can see a conversion from architecture to woven fabric. Good idea. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay, next is Building Triangles, Rectangles, and Squares by Mary Pierce. This picture, I would have cropped it from the top, uh, fairly close to the, uh, to the roof line. This is up at the, um, the uh, commons, at the barns up there. 
And the fact that there's snow there, and he caught this right at the right time to see those shadows. I bet you that was a whoa moment where you go, I got to take a picture of that. I like the little window in the bottom. Um, my eye kept following that line up the roof into the blue, though, and I, I would have cropped it a little tighter. But the pattern and the, the repetition is wonderful with the snow there. You wouldn't even notice that if the snow wasn't there. So everything worked very well here. The moment that he captured this was, uh, was well meant to be captured by a good photographer. And I thought it was very well done. Um, again, when I look at an image originally, I'll make a copy of it and start cropping it different ways looking at it. And uh, sometimes you can, uh, you'd be surprised what you can gather from a picture. And I think it's would have been a little stronger crop from the top, but a nice job. <coughs> okay. And next is uh, Busy B by, I think, Dennis Holly. This does satisfy my criteria of patterns. It's a wonderful framing of the concentric. It leads the eye right up into the, into the design. The addition of the B as a spoiler acts as a counter, counterpoint to the idea. Nice I enjoyed shot. this image. Okay. Um, and next is uh, Butterfly by Bill Mumford. I like the light in this picture. Um, I was curious to know how, how this was, was captured because uh, I think we're looking at the back of this, of this bug. I'm not quite sure. Um, but the repetition of the patterns and the color are really nice. I was, I was a little bothered by the, the left lower corner, but there's not much you can do about that. Um, if this particular bug was posing for him, you have to capture and take what you can. So um, I don't want to be picky about that, but the, the sharpness of it, the, the, the pattern, I, I thought it was very well done. I was really pleased to see it was captured in color too. Because I think in black and white, it would have been equally as fascinating. Again, I would have made a copy and tried that, but uh, I love the values from the wingtips going into the center toward the abdomen where it's constantly changing all the way through. Um, I thought it was very nicely done. It's, a, it's something that we should do more of when we have our bugs out in our gardens. So good job, William. All right. I agree with, uh, I agree with John that the color uh, adds to the, uh, the power of the patterns. I think that's a, a, a good component of the, of the design, having the color. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up is uh, Coil by Rochelle Stark. A very engaging set of patterns. Uh, for me, the pattern here derives some from the variety of the repetitions of curled shavings. Uh, one thought that I had about this as I as I looked at it, it caught my caught my uh, my attention quite quite thoroughly. Uh, order and chaos coexist. Nice and black and white. It is nice values. And the next one is also by Rochelle called Converge. I like the movement of this from, from uh, the right to the left side and from the top to the bottom uh, um, as the pattern became larger and then smaller again. It gave it a fan-like like effect. I was curious as to what it is, um, which doesn't make any difference at all because the picture is very nice. Um, I love the texture. I love the black and white. I, I thought it was very well done. Um, the cropping was nice because it makes the lines work really hard. And... Uh, I thought it was well done. What an interesting comparison to the previous one. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's very stark. Yeah. Which I think adds to it, especially from the, the, the variation from the top to the bottom. It's almost like a fan. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Hey, um, do you cool. want me to say something to it? It says, can we have the photographer say a bit about their pieces so we know what it is? Yeah. Do you want me to talk to that? <laughs> Please. Okay. Um, it's uh, it's one of those grates that roll down at night over 
like a door, a store oh, sure. door yeah. or window. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, so I just got just really close to to the edge, or you know, up against it, and then took it, looking down, you know, looking down down the street at, and you know, that, like it was going down the street. So that's what that is. And the other ones were wood shavings. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up is Krakosmia by Ellen Hewer. Oh. This is a precise pattern of the replication of shapes as they, as they uh, slender down. Uh, and the, the shape pattern is very effectively enhanced with the repeating color patterns. The uh, Bokar effect is employed is well employed too. Uh, here's a bias of mine. I, I read an image from left to right. And I wonder if the effect would be enhanced if the image were flipped so the eye might be led into the image from the lower left. Yeah. It's wonderful color. It is. Beautiful. Nicely saturated. And okay. Uh, that would be Velvia if it was slide film. <laughs> yeah, Fuji Velvia had real real nice saturation to it. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a really wonderful film, Velvia. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next up is uh, Dark Energy Revealed. Tim, Wade, me. This picture fascinated me. I wasn't quite sure if uh, he was in outer space photographing some uh, some strange mm -hmm. nebula, or if he was uh, on water, or or what he was. Uh, but I was fascinated by the not just the repetition, but it has a feeling of motion to it, um, like you would do with a, a moving stream. And I got to thinking, the color is wonderful. I didn't know if it was enhanced or not. It doesn't matter if it was, because as a uh, um, you know, as a creator of the image, um, that's what makes you an artist, I think. And I was quite fascinated by this. Uh, I like the fact that it's kind of a skinny horizontal because it draws you in a little more. I'd like to know more about what it is. Well, I guess I could tell you. Um, <laughs> it's actually just some ripples in the water on the bay. Uh, on the bay, okay, yeah. Last summer, one day. Um, but I took a little section of it and I just took it to the extreme. I wanted it to be something totally different. You got uh, it. And I zoomed it. I, you know, I had, I ran it through about four different apps and uh, enhanced the blue because I liked the blue. <laughs> Left the little bit of gold orange in there as, uh, you know, background radiation or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that was about it. That's nice a good job, capture. Tim. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I, I know a $2 million house up in Bay Harbor that this will look really good is about a, a six foot mural on the wall. Right, right. <laughs> They've got a blue room. The, the woman said, I wanted a blue room. And I thought this would, when I first saw it, I thought that belongs to Bay Harbor because that's just, and it is water. So it we is. got the harbor part covered. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next up is Deterioration by Ann Kennedy. And I find this an interestingly textured image, but I'm having trouble finding the patterns. Perhaps I'm being too concrete in defining pattern as replication of shape or color. In another sense though, the contrast of wood whorl and adjacent leaves is very interesting. I would like some help with seeing how you see the pattern And, and is Anne there? I like Anne, the can texture. You mute yourself. Yeah, the texture is wonderful. Yeah, the texture. <laughs> you can unmute with a space bar. Just hold it down. 
for it now. Well, it's the other way here. Oh, um, I thought this was patterns, to be honest with you. And then I watched a video that was on the email and I says, well, that's not exactly what you guys wanted, but that's patterns to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Where do you see the patterns, Ann? Help me, help me see it with you. Well, in the, in the beehive, all the lines and stuff, uh, that's okay. right. And in, in the, uh, the tree trunk over here, uh, the lines and stuff in that. Um, of course, the uh, the leaves are, you know, not really whatever. But uh, well, I really like the textures, as you may have heard me say. Okay. Yeah. So it's probably textures and not patterns. Well, <laughs> well it's a nice exposure. It's got some really nice uh, value there for black and white. Mm-hmm. Thank you. It looked like an Ansel Adams exposure. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. I'll take that. Yeah, I agree, John. That's awesome. OK. Um, next is Jim Jerwitz. Again, don't be afraid to be different. I'm going to ask everybody when this pops up to take a good look at it. And you'll find out why he called that, why he named it that. Don't be afraid to be different, because on the right side, almost in the middle is a round. These are pencils, I believe. I was absolutely oh. fascinated by this because I kept looking at it thinking we've got a whole box of pencils like this, if that's what they are. And uh, all the colors, the pattern, the repetition, and all of a sudden here's this round one. And I thought if there was a square one in there, it would have been me because I've, <laughs> well, never mind. <laughs> but I was quite fascinated by it. I thought, again, this would look very nice on a wall because it makes you stop and look at it. And then you see the title and I found myself smiling thinking, ah, a sense of humor as well. Oh yeah. Um, very, very well done. And the, the texture in each one of those pieces of wood is fascinating to me. Um, again, I'm not quite sure how, how, it, how it came about as to this particular image that we're viewing, but whatever he did to it is, is was very, very effective. And uh, a, a great image. Maybe stop and think. I don't have that many pencils lying around. Anyway. He has good vision here. You know, it's the kind of thing where after I saw this, I wanted to go in, into my wife's uh, closet and dig out all her art stuff and see if I could find an image like this. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's really cool. It makes you stop and think about little things that you have in your life that you don't even look at it closely. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of photography. You know, trying to do a painting, you're going to have a lot of time in it. With photography, you can take your lens and look at this. You can frame it in and out, either capture it or not, but you move on to something else. But this would made me stop and think. I really appreciated that. Nice job, Jim. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Um, next up is Dune Patterns uh, by Tim Wade. This is lovely, Tim. Two contrasting interacting patterns create a dynamism. The shading enhances the sand ripples. The bent grasses suggest wind action. Very satisfying image. I love the textures, the contrast of the straight grasses against the undulating uh, uh, sand drifts. Lovely. I love the feeling of motion in this frame. Right. You wonder how, how much wind was blowing when it, everything was formed here. A lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was beautiful in black and white. The texture is wonderful. Yep. The thing is, it's not really black and white. If you look closely. Oh, I see green. There's some green in there. Yeah, in the grasses. Yeah, yep. yeah. Wow. Pretty subtle, Tim. Yep. When the blizzard of 78 hit and I photographed the Allegheny on its side covered in ice, I shot it in black and white because it was black and white. Between the ice and the snow and the wind, there mm -hmm. was no color anywhere. 
and Time Magazine called and wanted a copy of it. And they, Can you shoot that in color? I said, that is, a, that is color. <laughs> because the guys in Washington, D.C. and New York don't have any sense of humor. I had to go back when the sun came out and photograph it again for, in color. But uh, that's what this reminded me of was this, this starkness of the, of the light, the, the material that's being captured. Um, like you say, it is in color. But you've got to look at that to see it. And that, that really, uh, that, that struck me too. But the texture and the pattern are wonderful. Great. Thank you. Um, next up is A Fan of Red Poles by Mary Picard. I love this one. Uh -huh. <laughs> this was shot by a Japanese artist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the simplicity of this really struck me. Uh, at first I thought, well, would I crop it? No, I wouldn't do anything to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's wonderful, the birds looking at you. Um, then the question becomes, is that a sparrow or, or a finch? Well, it's got a short beak, so it's probably a finch. Or is that a sp sparrow? Who knows? Um, Mary, this was very nicely done. Those are red poles, John. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, OK, you were asking before. I, I was trying to make somebody else see if they, if they knew the difference between a sparrow and a finch. But um, that's a learning thing when you post a photograph on Facebook and ask them, what is this? Well, the tail is short. The the beach is the beach short. This is this is the simplicity. of This is wonderful. Thank you. Um, I, I found myself leaning a little bit with the grass because it was just, <laughs> just it, it's 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 so simple. It's 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 spectacular. Yeah. This actually, all the birds have different. All the birds have different. was tipping quite. It actually, in reality, it's laying even further over than you can imagine, and I had to force myself to stop at this point i mean this is i had to turn this and crop it to make it where i could even stand it in the picture yeah you know yeah. otherwise it's almost laying completely down but yeah i brought it up to where i i felt like i brought it up to where the the far right stem was kind of at least almost to the to, to level mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the simplicity is beautiful and of course the other way i i knew they were red poles because that's you have that in your title so. Right. That's what I was saying. But yeah, thank you. Yeah. But it's uh, the simplicity. It reminded me of, of Japanese calligraphy. It does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the color is so muted and soft that it's a uh, th that adds to the impact of it. Well, it was a uh, it was a uh, close to a not a blizzardy, but, you know, again, it was all white. Everything around was white. Yeah. Um, I was driving and saw it and hit the brakes and. Oh, yeah shove my camera out to the side and shut the car off so I can get the camera, you know, everything holding still. Uh, babies, don't leave me. Don't leave me, not till right, I'm done. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so so was it the, the, the one is actually looking at me, you know, I mean, it took me, I, yeah. I probably took about 30 or 40 shots. Mm. So this was a drive-by shooting, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, kind of. I was out taking, I was actually taking pictures of snowy owls, of course, and I had been seeing the red poles all around that day, and I, I had a group of probably a hundred of them just a few minutes before this, but they took off. So yeah. I thought, well, I missed my opportunity, and I come around the corner and I see these guys like, oh, don't you move on me, stay there. They all came to our house. Oh, they're they're cute little, little things. We have to budget for for bird seeds in the winter because we've got so many birds out here, which I love, but. <laughs> Here too. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful shot. Thank you again. Okay. Uh, next up, we have Glass on Glass by Steve Engel. Oh. Okay. This is a great shot, Steve. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's mysterious to me. Um, the mystery is, is, is held in its almost dimensionless space. Uh, this just glistens with, uh, with mystery to me. It's almost as if the pattern is, is, is an illusion. I would have cropped it from the top about that whole top third off. It would have put so much more emphasis on the two, two or three or four or five different objects in the, in the middle of the photograph here. Um, Could have done. Could have done, yeah. Either way, yeah. Um, but I think the mirror and the exposure and everything is wonderful. Okay, uh, next up is Heat Sink by Bill Mumfer. This 
this <laughs> this picture fascinated me. I was at first I thought somebody took some wrenches and welded them into a fan blade. I realized well, there's a bunch of forks in that fan blade too. Um, I'd like to know what this is out of. But the repetition and the the, the whole exposure is again. I I really got a kick out of this. I looked at it for a long time, thinking, "What is that?" It's always fun to ask that question in a photograph, because uh, there's no answer to it until you get Bill to tell us what it was. <laughs> it almost feels to me like it's spinning. Yeah, the, the it is, uh, fast. a couple of years, a couple of years ago, I trashed out a desktop computer. And as I was doing that, I noticed this heat sink that was attached to oh. one of the computer components. It's really hot. And so I took it apart and saved it. It's, it's attached to a fan. And as the fan blows through the heat sink, it cools the computer components. Yeah, sure, sure. So it wasn't out of one of Elon Musk's uh, rockets, huh? <laughs> Really. Yeah, okay. it, 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 very interesting picture. Okay, next up is Hops by uh, Alan Hewer. Well, we certainly have replication of shape here. I'm a little, I'm a little conflicted. Um, I, I'm a, a bit bothered by the, by the midline, the horizon separating the <clears throat> uh, the shapes of the poles with such a prominent blue I'm wondering if uh, if it weren't re if it were changed to grayscale if if it might be more effective um, I'd also like to like to see how how maybe a kind a, a vertical formatting would uh, would would give the image feel um, th those those verticals seem to want a, a, a vertical space in my in my eye. Okay. Um, then up next is a link fence by Jerry Stutzman. I, I, I found the pattern of this quite fascinating. How many times have we seen a, a fence um, with vines or something growing through it? These are probably grape vines, it looks like. And cropped in on a visually crop in on a little portion of it and look at the repetition of the pattern. Um, I'm fascinated by things that humans build, and fences are one of them. If you look at the pattern of the wiring going through this at the vertical stripes, which are probably vinyl like a tape to cut the wind down and also give you a little privacy. And along comes mother nature and claims part of it for herself. Um, I thought this was very nicely done. I love the color. I like the simplicity of it. Um, although the pattern is very complex and almost a little confusing. Um, I thought it was very nicely done. Yeah, uh, this is actually uh, two fences inside each other. This is down oh, by okay. the marina. Yeah. All right. So you got yeah. you got a, a picket fence, sort of like than the uh, weed fence. So I thought it was kind of interesting texture. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. It doesn't matter if you shoot this in black or in, in a horizontal or vertical. You're going to have the have the same effect of uh, with a repeating pattern. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Ed Crippen with. Bluebirds. <laughs> well, this is a really simple answer to the challenge of patterns. I couldn't, uh, it, it, it couldn't be more straightforward. Um, uh, I liked the, the choice that, that you made in, in, in slanting the louvers um, to my eye a diagonal always uh, it gives me the impression of something going somewhere. There's a there's an implied movement in my eye. Uh, I wonder if the top louver could have been made a little more dense so that it was not a mismatch with the with the density of the other louvers. Okay. 
So these are louvers on an old Toyota Land Cruiser I own. Uh huh. And uh, I was having a hard time. I, I took this picture about 10 times with the slats horizontal and vertical, and it was pretty dull. So I threw them on an angle like this. And yeah, I agree. It does add a lot more to it. I don't know what yeah, happened yeah. with that top louver. I think it's just the lighting. Yeah, the light source is from the top. Yeah. 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 Could you select that and, uh, and, and darken it some? I probably could, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice, simple image. Works. Thank you. Okay. Um, next up is New Growth by Mary Ellen Sullivan. I like this this image. Uh, I think it belongs in a competition for texture. Um, mm. There's a report. If, if you <laughs> zoomed in on the on the ferns up in the upper right corner, you'd have repetition with pattern. Um, but the trunk of the tree, I think that's what it is, a trunk of a tree. Um, there's a lot of texture in there, and I was quite fascinated by it because it looks like it may have been damp that day. I'm not sure. It might just be the light. Um, but the patterns are in various places, but they're not consistently working together. So uh, I like the picture, it's a great exposure. And uh, I was quite fascinated. If that is a tree trunk, I'd like to see how big the tree is. Yeah, really. Because it's quite fascinating to me to see the, the texture of it. Any, any response from our photographer? <laughs> it is a tree trunk and it was raining last week. Uh, big storm, so. Um... Well, the colors are very nicely saturated. I don't know the name of the tree. It was through a cemetery, and I was trying to kill some time before Costco reopened the um, gas station because they were doing testing. So, uh, and I was running a little late for the critique. So this was, I just thought because it was repetitive pattern, I didn't think about it being altogether the same thing. Yeah. Did you say you were killing time in the cemetery? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh dear. Stuff. <laughs> I like it. I was. <laughs> we had a lot of flooding and I needed to be somewhere for a while. So. Mm. I think it's a challenge to point that out. <laughs> yes. Well, they are no. peaceful places. You gotta love it. But I don't know the tree. I'm sorry. I should have found it. there was no one to ask. You guys. <laughs> it's pretty quiet. It's old, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. It just caught my eye driving by. Yeah. What's it, like I said, the lighting's really nice on it. Okay. Uh, next is Pattern of Support by Jay Peterson. I like this, Jay. You've got. Uh, Horizontals, verticals, and diagonals all incorporated in, in this in this complex of patterns. Um, uh, my sense of horizontals, <clears throat> they're they're uh, they, they represent uh, they're passive to me. Horizontals are passive and and uh, suggest repose. Vertical lines to me suggest strength, um, and diagonal lines suggest to me movement. So we have we have quite a quite a collection of feelings here in this in this simple pattern. I like it. Thank you. This next one is Piers Pier P W E R. Jerry Stutz. I think the repetition of the dock should have been emphasized by a little tighter crop. Um, I didn't see any use for the, the clouds up above, um, but the repetition mm. of these marching pilings, uh, I would have cropped it in. If you, if you put your hand up and block off part of that, you can see the repetition. Again, like he was saying, like Cal was saying, the, the horizontals and the verticals there are very strong. Um, I would have taken advantage of that with a, a tighter crop. Um, I didn't see that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. 
I, I concur. I, I, I see that too. Uh, uh, to concentrate just on the peer uh, would make a very strong, very strong image. A little suggestion of the blue water. The the blue is 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 a additive to the patterns. Uh, I find the sky overwhelming too. Marinas are always interesting when there aren't any boats in them because there are a lot of patterns, a lot of repetition in them. Okay. Uh, next up is Powerful Lines by Alicia Erickson. <clears throat> Power Lines. Uh, uh, no, I won't go there. Um, I very much like the idea. I've I've often looked at at power towers myself and and uh, thought about photographing them. However, from my experience of looking at pictures from the from from years and years back, uh, power lines have been much photographed. Sometimes the photographer has used a zoom lens and compressed the field, makes for very interesting. Uh, illusion of closed space. Uh, we have designs within designs. I like that the, uh, um, the triangles within, the, within the, uh, the structure are strong. A little problem for me is the intrusion of that wedge of, of, uh, of middle ground, right middle ground uh, that um, that disrupts the the uh, the strength of the uh, of the towers in my mind. Um, the gray sky also tends to flatten the image a little bit, which uh, which which uh, um, I would like to I would like to not have that <laughs> that flat sky. Um, I would find myself coming back to this area when there was some. Um, uh, some a brighter sky, some some direction of light, maybe to um, accent the the lines of the tower with uh, with some some silhouetting. Okay. okay. Um, next is a uh, proud peacock by Dennis Holly. <laughs> This picture fascinated me. Uh, the first thing I wanted to do was crop it up just underneath the beak. If you took a piece of paper right now or something, you could block off the bottom half of that or the bottom uh, quarter of that right under his beak and watch all the patterns jump out of the uh, off the screen. Because uh, when I looked at it, I wanted to look at his feet and then follow it up. When I uh, cropped it with a piece of paper just under his beak horizontally across the bottom, all of a sudden, the pattern and the, the size of his feathers really jumped out at me. And uh, there's nothing like a good peacock to give you a challenge for what you're gonna do with the patterns. I like both images though. I mean, I, I understand exactly what he's showing here with the whole bird and I like it. Um, I like the fact that the whatever he's standing on, it looks like snow almost, um, because it helps the simplicity and the power of the uh, feathers above him. I think this is a bird built by a committee. Because <laughs> like, you know, well, for instance, they don't have peacocks at, at the uh, United Nations because some of the uh, African nations, the people are very superstitious about the eyes on the, on the feathers. And uh, the, the pattern is, and the exposure is wonderful. So either way, I think it would work well, very well. Um, I like the fact that you filled the entire frame with those feathers. Uh, made me wonder what he does on a windy day but the repetition and the pattern of it is, is just, uh, it, it's very nicely done. Okay. All right, the next one is uh, Snow Clouds by Rags Avery. <laughs> Rags, I almost didn't want to see the title. I wanted to be uh, uh, momentarily confused by this. Then um, uh, 
I was shortly reminded of, of Stieglitz's series of cloud images that he titled Equivalence. And he explained, my photos are not about things. The intention is to express pure emotion. And uh, I like this for that. Thank you, Cal. Was that shot in color? <laughs> yeah, I shot it in color and then it had some green moss and I thought it'd be interesting, John, but then I converted to black and white because I love the contrast and texture that was coming out, those ice, those snow crystals going across that, that oak, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what I like is if you just sort of step back a little bit and look at it, you're, you're looking, you're above the clouds looking straight down. Good perspective, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, next up is snow tracks, Rags Avery. Well, when I saw this, I thought the same thing. I thought, well, the repetition is wonderful. I like the converging lines of horizontal and vertical. Um, this would not work if it didn't have snow on it. If it was just wet with rain or something, it wouldn't have nearly the impact. Then I got the curious and thought, okay, what kind of tracks? Is that water underneath there? Is it just darkness or is it? Um, there are a lot of questions to ask about a picture like this. But I thought the crop was very nicely done. I like the fact that it's moving away from us. Gives you a nice perspective uh, for foreground and and uh, background, and uh, in black and white, it works great. I, I, uh, I, I'm very curious about what it is. So I have a theory. It, it, it <laughs> kind of freaked me out. Because, some work. Yeah. So, so this is a, um, a, a pagoda. My wife had this built on our lower deck, and it's a bunch of. Uh, two by tens uh -huh. going across and then slats going across and the snow bill up on but when I shot it it was a little underexposed so I could and uh, when I brought up some of the exposure I saw those eyes in that wood that kind of creeped me out a little <laughs> oh yeah 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 <laughs> I didn't know if that was a reflection or if it was actually wood underneath it I see what it is now um, was that a pergola Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah 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 that's the word yeah. Pergola. yeah yeah that means uh um outdoor porch out outdoor living room in greek oh does it okay yeah Good. we have one the pandemic put one on our house <laughs> <laughs> nicely done yeah okay next up is uh solace in kennedy it's S-O-L-U-S, Solus. Mm. I see the shadows as, uh, as kind of floating diagonals. It's a kind of a counterpoint action here. Uh, I love the uh, lonely life form. There's something about the flatness of the shadow imposed on the dimensions of the flooring. There's, there's a... There's a dynamic here. It's almost, um, almost like uh, one of those optical illusions where you see uh, the face and the vase. It's not quite that, but this my my eye goes back and forth between the 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 planking highlighted and the shadows. And the diagonals again uh, give me a sense of movement. The contrasting leaf is is a is a lovely pause. Color is great. Yeah. Okay. Um, next up is Stockholm Doorway with Leo P P P Paviglio. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. This this photograph when I first saw it, I thought it, it's a fascinating door. Um, I thought it's interesting how it was centered. But when you stop and look at it, you've got all these different patterns and it actually works being centered like that. If you did it off to the right or the left, 
it, it would not have the impact that it has right now. Um, I'd like to go to Stockholm and see the store myself and see what I'd do with it. So Leo, can you take me to Stockholm next time you go? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's fascinating. The, the color is very nice. The contrast between the yellow and the brown um, actually makes the picture work a little better. And I was quite fascinated, like like most doors, I want to open it up and see what's on the other side. Mm. Um, this is a pretty substantial door, so I figured it's probably old, um, well built. But for some reason, I found it very comforting and very nicely done. It was uh, the balance works, and that kind of surprised me because at first I thought, oh, it's centered. So what? Mm. I like the centering too. It feels it feels like the door is really substantial. Yeah. yeah, it does. Okay, next is uh, White Sand Shadow, John Gill. I like this, John. I, it's, it's a very engaging contrast between the standing and the fallen blades. It, uh, it really provokes an interpretation. Uh, uh, I can. I would like to see more density in the highlights to give a little more emphasis to the sand contours, especially in the upper background. But I like the contrast between the upstanding blades and the and the and the line down blades. Okay. Um, next we have Winter Sunset by Jay Peterson. When I first looked at this, I didn't, I, I, I couldn't find anything to focus in on to, to find as a interest point of it. And then I started thinking about the sky in the background and the pattern of the trees, which are all basically the same age within a short period of time. So the repetition of that worked, worked very nicely. Um, it, it's nice to see somebody out, you know, the, the lighting here is probably challenging um, because it's bright in the background, not in the foreground. Um, again, the patterns are, are uh, okay. Subtle. I like the highlighting of the snow on the branches in the foreground. Yeah. Um, it's, it's to me. There's a, a little quality of myster mystery. The uh, the trees as a veil. Uh, 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 separating me from the from the the light of the sun sunset or sunrise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, what I liked about it uh, was that contrast between the solidity of the trees and the etherealness of the, of the clouds and the sunset. This is our backyard, by the way, so I don't have to go very far to find this. <laughs> nice backyard. We've had some great sunsets lately. Okay. Uh, next is yearning... Yearning for attention, John Gill. Well, I thought that uh, title was somewhat of a pun. Oh, there we are. Yeah. Anyway, it is a good a good example of, of of emphasizing patterns supplemented with color. In this instance, it's essential to have the color. So color is a design component of these patterns. It would not work in grayscale. Okay. All right. Um, now we're entering the open category. And we have Creekside Cabin by Rick Sack. When I first saw this, I thought, I want to live there. <laughs> you know, every now and then on the internet, somebody says, 
uh, would you live in a remote cabin for a year without internet or, or television? And I thought, there's the cabin right there. I, I love the, the bridge going across. Um, I love it even more because it's a little in disrepair, which I like, which means once you get in that cabin, you don't have to cross that creek again. Um, I like the balance of the composition. The foreground water makes it look like you could live there a long time if you have fresh water and protection from the from the elements. Um, it's a beautiful picture. I, I, I couldn't change anything in it except living there. No car either, which I, you know, you're going to walk across the bridge in your home. There's a lot of stories you can make out of that one. That's nice, Rick. Where is it? Yeah, I want to know where it's at too. Yeah. <laughs> I find the bridge. I find the the bridge very very invitational. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's a bit of a sadness here. There's a I, I know no one in my mind. I know no one is there now. There's a kind of a, a waiting for 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 something to happen. I like the story. Yeah, it's very nice. So Rick, where's the sad again, please? There you go. Cedar Run Creek. I don't know if you can hear Cedar Run Creek. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, the next up, we have early morning walk. Uh, Mary Pierce. Very nice image. The um, the diagonal leads leads us right in from the left. Uh, the action of the leg spread uh, adds to the to the power of the diagonal motion. The elongated shadows uh, connect the figures to the entrance of the image. Um, I guess they're doves to the left of the boys. Uh, I had to smile a little bit when I saw them um, unmolested by the by the movement of the traffic to their in their territory. The pillar on the right is a nice framing element. Uh, 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 very effective capture of a moment in time. The job of a photograph. That's a nice picture. Okay, next is uh, pavement design by Marilyn Hoodstrat. When I first saw this, I thought anybody who's ever laid block or, or brick for a pattern, um, you probably have sore knees when you look at this. Uh, it, it's fascinating. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of it, here's this little metal thing. It looks like it might be a something to unlock if you turn it. Um, I wasn't quite sure what that was for, but it certainly adds intrigue and interest to the picture. Um, it doesn't bother me that it's centered just because of the, re the repetition of the pattern. It breaks it up. Um, I did try cropping it from different angles, and I did like it cropped from the right somewhat because of the alternating uh, vertical and, and zigzag patterns um, and horizontal patterns, too, actually. Um, I thought it was quite fascinating. How many of us have ever looked down at the pavement and wondered about it? Um, if you drive down 6th Street or 8th Street where the uh, asphalt isn't covering the brick, it's the same type of pattern where it'll last forever. and then the question comes up again, what is that thing in the road? You have any idea, Marilyn, what it is? Uh, I don't know what it is. It was in uh, uh, the brick pavement is actually a plaza in Wageningen in the Netherlands. Really? And yeah. I, I suspect that maybe it was drilled in to be able to tie something down if they sure. uh -huh. were up or something, but I don't know. I never found out what it yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love the texture and the patterns. 
I bet it's old. Uh, yep, my uh, grandmother was born there, and uh, it's it's the the church, the Re Dutch Reformed Church is right in the middle of the plaza, so it's all been around for a long time. Yeah, yeah, nicely and done. I, it's, I took it more than a year ago, which is why I didn't put it in patterns. I, took, I was uh -huh. there two, two yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah, it's nicely done. Okay, next is portrait in red dress. Uh, Alicia Erickson. This is a lovely pensive portrait. Uh, her direct, her directness with us is uh, uh, is very compelling. Um, I would like to see two things. One is I'd like to see a highlight in her eyes, and the other thing I'd like to see is her hand and forearm. Um, uh, burned in just a little bit so that the tonality matched her shoulder. Um, the, the whiteness of the arm is a little distracting, um, pulls me away from the highlights of her face. I want to a fascinating start. picture of black and white with the ellipse red. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to hear Alicia. How did you get this uh, portrait? Um, so this was a styled shoot that I attended. Um, Ellis and Indigo, they're down in Owasso. They came up to Boyne um, and we went to that avalanche park where it has a huge ski hill or sledding hill. And um, this gal actually is a pageant winner in Michigan and she stood out in the freezing cold in this dress and let us mm. photograph her so it was a really great session and I appreciate the feedback thank you awesome nicely framed okay thank you next is a rainy day Mary Ellen Sullivan <laughs> I like this picture a lot. I like the, the mood of it. I like the fact that it was framed in with the trees on the left side. It, it draws your, your, your vision into the center of the frame going down this waterway. Um, the texture and the quality of it is in the tone, the tonality is beautiful. I looked at it for a long time thinking, I wonder what the temperature was. Um, there's so many different questions with it. it. Obviously there's a little bit of haze in the background which added to the, the mystery of it, as well as the beauty. Um, I thought it was very nicely done. Uh, the framing was was excellent and so was the textures. So good job. Thanks, John. It was about 50 degrees and it was the same day as the cemetery. Went from the cemetery to the Laguna Lake that was flooding over. Yeah, yeah. So really cold uh, too. Yeah, very nice. Cold for here. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you. There's a somber quality to the tonalities that uh, that appeals to me. Okay, next up is Row Upon Row by Marilyn Hugestad. The diffused images, the diffused images within the image add a dimensionality. There's something about this design that really holds my attention. Sure. Wow. Can we get the story, Marilyn? Is that stained glass? Pardon me? Uh, it is a glass wall of a building. Um, in Reykjavik, and again, I took that three years ago, so that's why it's an open. But uh, I, it's, it's, I took it with a long lens from quite a distance. Um, it, it just was fascinating to me. And as I looked at the detail, I just, you just, there's just so much to keep looking at in it. Oh, there is, yeah, yeah. Hmm. And the incidental reflections really, really, add to the, the dynamism of it.
very engaging. Thank you. Okay, and lastly, we have Snow Lake, Snowy Lake, uh, Rick Sack. When I saw this, I thought I would have titled it Stopping by the Woods on a Snowy Evening. Um, again, I like the way it was framed from the top. It's a good thirds composition. There's a lot of different colors in there, which of course they're, they're muted in the winter, but they also have a tendency to be fairly strong elements in a photograph. Um, you can see that in that, that ridge of, uh, actually it's probably a shoreline, I think, of, of grass there, the brown. Um, a lot of people think that, that winter is featureless, but this is a good example of how it's not. Right. Um, I, I love the snow. And I thought he's standing under that, that um, branch so he doesn't get snow on, him, on his camera lens, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's a nice picture. I have a question. So Rick, did you subframe the, the uh, pine tree in there to cut out that, that high bright sky that's featureless? Was that on purpose the way you did that? Yes, I actually was going for two things there. One, to block out that gray, ugly sky. And secondly, I tried to match it with the tree line on the other side of the shore. So the, yeah, yeah. Uh, it kind of added a little depth and also uh, moved along the same, uh, same curvature. That's cool. It did. Yeah, that was nicely done. A thinking photographer. Yeah, that was good. Well, folks, that's a wrap. Again, for me, when I when I view these images, I'm always impressed with the, the quality of work that everybody's doing. Um, and I've been around since basically the beginning of the club. And I've been very impressed with how people have changed. I, I think, Mary, some of the stuff you're doing is so different and so more power, so much, so much more powerful than what you did years before. And I'd like to think that everybody's learning as they go along because that's what it's all about is, is growing with your camera. And I, I, I can see people's visions um, sharpening, if you will. It, it's, uh, it's quite impressive. And you know, when I've, I've done these uh, showcases in the, in the fall and winter, I, I find them in my computer two or three years later, I look at the pictures and think, we've had a lot of growth in this group. And uh, I, I'm real impressed with it. I want to pass that along because, uh, well, we don't need compliments any more than anybody. Yeah, but it's nice to have somebody say, thank you for your work. So that's what I'm offering you tonight is, thank you. some of it's very inspiring. A lot of it makes me stop and think about the things I look for because my training and my eyes is a little different from other people. And then you look at everybody else's images and you realize every one of us is different. And every one of us can teach us something. And Very we, well said, John. Yeah, I agree, Jerry. So could yeah, we give a big yeah. uh, shout out to our two panelists, Cal Bolter and John Russell. Thank you guys so much for your hard work of being a Thank panelist you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Great images tonight. Beautiful. It's stuff. just great to see how the club is uh, responding and growing. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. John and uh, Cal, would you stay on just for a minute with me? Yep. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Stay safe. That's me, Great. the ghost image. <laughs> what I wanted to ask you, too, about uh, was uh, 